Welcome to Prism Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 3 of ASP.NET MVC tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss about creating an ASP.NET MVC application and understand how MVC request is processed as opposed to a web form request. First, let's go ahead and create an MVC project. So let's flip to Visual Studio. Click on File, New Project. And I'm going to create an ASP.NET MVC4 web application. And let's call this MVC Demo. Click OK. And let's select an empty template. And then look at the View Engine drop-down list. I get two options here, meaning we have two built-in View Engines, ASPX and Razor. Which one do we use? I personally prefer Razor View Engine because it has got much cleaner code. We'll talk about the differences between Razor and ASPX views in a later video session when we discuss about views. For now, let me select Razor as the View Engine and click OK. So that should create an MVC project for us. Now let's flip uh, to another instance of Visual Studio that's running on my machine and let's create a web forms application. So click on File, New Project. And then this time I'm going to create an ASP.NET web forms application. So I'm going to select ASP.NET web application and let's call this web forms demo. All right, let's click OK. That should create a web forms application. Now we have MVC demo here, the MVC project. And notice the Solution Explorer. Within the Solution Explorer, we have models, views, and controllers. You know, these folders, as the names suggest, they're going to contain models, views, and controllers of our MVC application. We'll discuss about models and views in detail in a later video session. Now, let's go ahead and add a controller to our MVC project. And to do that, right click on the controller folder, add controller, and then give your controller a meaningful name. I'm going to call this home controller. Click add, and that should add a file with name homecontroller.cs to the controllers folder. Okay, and this is nothing but a class file. So it has got this class with the name home controller. And notice this, this this class actually inherits from the base controller class. Okay, so what is a controller? It's nothing but a class which inherits from base controller class. And classes can contain functions. So this controller class has got one function at the moment, which is index. And look at the return type. It's returning something called action result. We'll discuss about this return type action result in a later video session. For now, let's make this index function return string instead of uh, action result. And what string do I want to return? I want to return a message from this MVC application function saying hello from MVC application. So that's the string I want to return. So this function very straightforward. All it's doing is returning a string. So at the moment, if you look at this controller, it's simple. It's a class, and it has got one function called index, which is going to return the string. OK, now at this point, if I go ahead and run this, by default, it's going to use built-in ASP.NET development server. Look at this. It's using the Visual Studio built-in ASP.NET development server. But let's deploy this to IIS. And deploying this to IIS is very simple. First, let's open IIS. And to do that, click on Start, type Run, and then press Enter. That should open Run window. Within Run window, type INET Manager and hit OK. That should open IIS. OK, now at the moment, if I expand you know, the virtual directories, the websites that are there in this IIS, look at this. At the moment, I don't have MVC demo. So let's deploy this project MVC demo to IIS. And to do that, right click on the project, go to Properties, and then on the Web tab, you know, look at this. At the moment, we are using Visual Studio Development Server. But instead of that, I want to use a local IIS web server. So that's the radio button that I'm going to select. And then click on this button, Create Virtual Directory. So the virtual directory was successfully created. So now if we go back to IIS, we should have uh, you know, MVC demo created there. OK, so now let me go ahead and run this uh, MVC project. Let's save that. And then if we run this now, you know, it should be using the local IIS. 
look at here it's using a random port number meaning it's using the Visual Studio built-in development server but here it's not using the port number look at this local host it's nothing but the name of the server it's running on my machine and MVC demo is the name of the project okay now let's go ahead now let's say I want to print this message in a web forms application how do I do that it's pretty straightforward you know in a web form you add a web form and in the load event of that web form you include a response dot write and then give it this message it's just going to write that message onto the web form so let's do that quickly and then we'll differentiate between uh, web forms and MVC the request processing okay so I'm going to get rid the, of this about and default web forms and then I'm going to add a web form with name web form one dot ASPX so add a new item let's call it web form one dot ASPX and then let's get to the code behind file so within the code behind file I'm going to say response dot write hello from web forms application okay so let's go ahead and deploy this also to um, IS and to do that simply right click on the project it's the same process and go to the web tab and then select use local IS web server by default you know we get a default directory which is the name of the project web forms demo you can change it if you want to uh, and then click on create virtual directory that should create a virtual directory with an IS for that so let's go ahead and run this now as you might expect this web forms application should use local IS instead of the built-in web server and then look at this we are actually it's still using uh, the local IS for some reason let's see if that is saved properly so let's refresh this so we should have web forms demo there and let's actually save it it didn't save that I still see that star symbol there that's why it's not saved so let's save it let's run it now and at this point it should use local IS instead of the built-in um, Visual Studio built-in ASP.NET development server okay now let's understand how these requests are handled you know the ASP.NET web forms request as opposed to an MVC request so obviously if you look at the MVC application notice the URL here it says localhost MVC demo that's it now what I'm going to do here is and look at the output we get that message hello from MVC application now I'm going to say in the URL so localhost is the name of the server MVC demo is the project name and then home forward slash I'm going to say index and then press enter look at that I get the same um, you know output so this is the URL localhost MVC demo home slash index and look at the web forms URL localhost web forms demo web form one dot ASPX okay so we are used to web forms development so if you look at this URL this is straightforward you know localhost is the server name web forms demo is the project name and web form one dot ASPX that's the name of the file so this URL actually invokes a file with name web form one dot ASPX so within my web forms application we have got that web form one dot ASPX so when the request for this web form is received at the web server you know obviously all the events of this web form will be processed including the page load event at which point it's going to generate this message generate the HTML and send it back to the requested client so basically you know within web forms application you know the URLs are mapped to the physical files okay here web form 1.aspx is a physical file that exists within our ASP.NET web forms application whereas in an MVC application the URLs are mapped to controllers and controller action methods okay so basically if you look at the MVC URL it's localhost that's the name of the server and MVC demo is the project as usual so there's no difference between those two parts in a MVC and web forms but then after that after the project name you have this home so this is nothing but the controller so you know it actually searches MVC controllers folder by default is there a controller with name home and we do have it okay and then after that it's the function within that controller okay so home controller and index function so in invoke this URL is going to invoke index function that resides in home controller 
and obviously we know all the controllers within an MVC application are present in controllers folder by default okay so in MVC URLs are mapped to controller action methods so usually functions inside a controller uh, that can respond to URLs are called as controller action methods okay but whereas in a web forms URLs are mapped to physical files okay so in my MVC project you know if you look at this I have a home controller and within that I have index function so you know I get this message back now let's say instead of index function I'm I'm saying something like you know get details for example and then press enter what will happen the resource cannot be found why is that within home controller I don't have a function called get details that's why I get a 404 HTTP status code 404 meaning the resource cannot be found so if I go ahead and add a get details function to our controller within this home control I mean a function to this home controller class then it should work so let me actually copy this and paste it here and let's call it get details so that's the name of the function so get details okay let's save it and let's call it you know get details invoked okay so now let's actually run this once again So I get that localhost MVC demo when the web form loads. Look at that. I, by default, the index function is called. So I'm going to go to the home controller and then I'm going to go to get details function. Okay, look at that. We get that message get details invoked. Now instead of the home controller, if I say let's say home one and then press enter, so obviously within the controllers folder we don't have a controller with name home one. That's why again we get this message the resource cannot be found. So the important thing to understand is that in MVC, you know the URLs are mapped to controller action methods, whereas in web forms URLs are mapped to physical files. We'll discuss about controllers, models, and views in detail in a later video session. On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, uh, C Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.